Saturn is the most beautiful planet of the solar system. I mean, with rings, it's really, you know, it shines. It's, it's a jewel of the solar system. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion mile trek to Saturn. Cassini was a mission to go to the Saturn system and explore the giant planet. Cassini is uh, the largest and most complex and maybe the most successful mission of uh, deep space and exploration of the solar system ever built. I hope that you will apologize for my great emotion. I mean, uh, this is a moment we are sharing the most important mission of the next millennium. Item 149 and 5150. Cassini, I think, really changed how we looked at the Saturn system, and some of our ideas were maybe a little too simple. And a good example is the rings. Although we knew that Titan, Saturn's largest moon, was unique even before the Cassini-Huygens mission arrived there, we actually didn't know all the major discoveries that the mission was going to bring forward. The mission originally was four years long, that prime mission. We added two years for an Equinox mission and then seven more years. And we can confirm after Cassini-Huygens has explored it for 13 years that it's really an exotic world. You turn your head back and you say, wow, gosh, 20 years have passed. Everything, and this was a continuous, I would say a continuous sound in all my life. Cassini was always there. The people that built Cassini and, and wrote the software and flew Cassini, it might be in the thousands. Uh, 19 different countries have contributed instruments or, or science to Cassini. You're looking up at the night sky and you see Saturn and you know that the Cassini spacecraft carrying this DVD with your family's signatures on it is orbiting this remote world. The NASA Space Agency built the Cassini orbiter. The goal of Huygens was to explore, descend and land on the surface of Titan. I get antenna is the heart of a communication system. International collaboration was very key to Cassini when we got to a budget crunch. We had some moment of tension. I mean, the one, of course, uh, was in 1994 when NASA wanted to cancel the mission. It was, was, it was a nightmare because uh, there was already a lot of investment. In Europe, what we did, we got our Director General of ESA at that time to send a letter to the US Vice President Al Gore. The content of the letter uh, said basically that we have invested so much ourselves in Huygens, our investment would be wasted if you would cancel the mission. And our cooperation on future other projects would also be affected. So please, do not cancel Cassini-Huygens and eventually Cassini-Huygens was not cancelled. This mission was very, very challenging from the technological point of view. It was the last press conference before the launch and just prior to the press conference I hear, hey, there is a big problem with Huygens. hope that we don't affect the launch period, but until we get the probe open, I think it would pre be premature to assume that this is uh, a quick turnaround situation. Unfortunately, the air conditioning was set up 10 times too hard and it destroyed the, the foam which was inside Huygens. Huygens had to be removed from Cassini. Huygens had to be open and clean. If it had been planned, it would have taken months, but it was all done within one week. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10. When Cassini Huygens took off, everyone was very tense. Nine. Eight, We're thinking, seven, okay, it's got to work, six, it's going to work, it's fine. Five, Is it going to work? Four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion All of us got to together Saturn. and we're hugging and I'm crying. I, I, I think it's the it's only time in my life I cry for yeah. my, my professional life. The rocket went into this huge cloud 
and the cloud brightened up and you could hear everybody kind of gasp and wonder, did Cassini explode? This is really a moment in the mission that I will remember forever. Everybody is happy because the mission, the launch, was successful and uh, I think they were happy also because we had a good number of doings. Seven years after that, in 2004, we arrived at Saturn. The flight team is in place for Saturn orbit insertion and that is when the spacecraft must be captured by Saturn's gravity or it will fly right on past the planet and the mission is over. Has but it was worth the wait. Okay, we have burn complete here. We will release Huygens' probe and it will fly on its own for about three weeks. When it encounters the atmosphere of Titan, it will turn on and begin its descent uh, sequence into uh, Titan. The hardest part of putting Huygens together was perhaps the fact that we were designing for what was an unknown environment. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Huygens arrival on Saturn's moon Titan. The European probe uh, slammed into the atmosphere of this giant moon earlier today and the capsule apparently survived the entry. This morning we had an engineering success and uh, we can say this afternoon that we have also a scientific success. What we thought of Titan's surface actually um, didn't prepare us at all for what we saw. And when I saw the first image, I thought, God, this is not Titan's surface, that's Mars. Oh, what are we doing with Mars here? You know, could someone just take this Mars picture off the screen? Because we're waiting for Titan here. And then one of my colleagues said, it's Titan. Huygens is the first landing on another moon, the most distant landing uh, in the solar system, which is really resembling in many ways to the Earth. So we have seen Earth-like uh, landscapes, Earth-like uh, geology, Earth-like lakes, and uh, this is really one of the most fascinating results of the mission. Some of the most unexpected findings of Cassini have had to do with this tiny moon Enceladus. Here's this moon we thought should be frozen solid. And we knew Enceladus before, but we did not realize that uh, it had enough energy in its, uh, in its interior to produce those kind of geysers, which means that there is an ocean, internal ocean, beneath the surface. Since this discovery, we are thinking that uh, Enceladus may be a good place to search for extraterrestrial life. And this was not expected at all before Cassini. Cassini, I think, really changed how we looked at the Saturn system. The rings are interesting. They're only on average about 30 feet thick. So very thin, given how wide and expansive they are. And so the particles are compressed. And so if you're a mountain-sized moon, you're gonna stick up to either side of the rings. We are going to dive into the gap between the rings of Saturn and Saturn's atmosphere, a place no one, no spacecraft's ever gone. Cassini will never end. 127 flybys of Titan is gonna give work to three generations of astronomers. So I'm still gonna be working on Cassini data until I die. The project science group meetings were occurring three times per year, every year, and you look at your friends that gather together and you get old together. Someone losing their hairs, someone with white hairs, some lady a little bit less younger than before. In some cases, our kids have grown up together. We've taken vacations together. So when the mission ends, that breakup of the Cassini family, that will be a hard time and a sad time. When Cassini will come to an end, I, f I will feel sad 
but very proud of having been part of such a fantastic mission. After shaking the hands, after a drink, after saying, wow, we did it, we did it, as we said at the launch. We, we said the same at the end, and uh, the day after, I don't know, maybe they're going to sit on, on, the, on the seashore and uh, pretending that the wet in my, ear, my eyes are, is only some mist from the ocean. I don't know. On September 15, 2017, the Cassini spacecraft will dive into Saturn, ending a 13-year tour of the ringed planet and its strange moons. Cassini arrived at Saturn in 2004 after a seven-year journey through the solar system. Its first port of call was Titan, Saturn's largest moon a frigid world of nitrogen smog and dark hydrocarbon lakes. Cassini released the Huygens probe to land on Titan. Parachuting through the moon's smoggy atmosphere, Huygens sent back images of alien riverbeds carved out of methane and water ice. Our first touchdown on an alien moon. Cassini returned to Titan over a hundred times using the moon's gravity as a slingshot to shift its orbit and weave a three-dimensional pattern through space. Over hundreds of flybys, Cassini's cameras dissolved Saturn's majestic rings into grooves and gaps, bands and braids. For 13 years, Cassini joined the dance of Saturn's 62 moons, scuffed marbles chasing each other around a golden ring. The flattened moonlit pan clears a narrow track through the rings. Potato-shaped Prometheus carves ripples in Saturn's thin F-ring. Sponge-like Hyperion tumbles chaotically through the void. And pale Iapetus sweeps its orbit clean, a ball of ice dusted with black and ridged with mountains. But the most surprising moon of all was Enceladus, glistening with fresh snow. Its crinkled shell hides an ocean of water that might be hospitable to life. Geysers of salt water shoot from stretch marks near its south pole. Cassini flew through these plumes several times. Its sensors detected promising molecules, but they were not designed to look for life. Are alien microbes hitching a ride in the briny spray? It will take a future spacecraft to find that answer. Cassini arrived at Saturn in the depths of northern winter, with the North Pole in darkness. As the planet tipped downward, Saturn's seasons slowly changed. Perfect lighting to study the North Polar Hurricane, a six-sided storm that could swallow four Earths. Some of Cassini's orbits took it behind Saturn, an alien sunset before hours of darkness. Looking back past Saturn's rings, Cassini even saw the distant Earth, a pinprick of blue light. In April, the spacecraft swung close by Titan for the last time, letting the moon's gravity pull it inward for the first of 22 dives inside Saturn's rings. The grand finale, 22 chances to peer at Saturn's cloud tops, study the pole, and look out at the rings from the inside. But Cassini's fuel is almost gone. Its watch is ending after 20 years in space. To keep the lakes of Titan and the snows of Enceladus untouched by any earthly microbes, the spacecraft must be destroyed. 
On September 15th, Cassini will make its final dive, piercing Saturn's clouds at over 70,000 miles an hour, straining to remain upright as it sends its final data back to Earth. Saturn's butterscotch clouds will burn and scatter it into a wisp of alien atoms, leaving nary a ruffle nor a burp to show for it. Just a brief meteor flash. A streak of light that no eyes that we know of may ever see. Go ahead. Okay, we call loss of signal, loss of X band at. Call loss of signal at 115546 for the S band, so that would be the end of the spacecraft. Copy that. Project manager on FSO Cord. Maybe a trickle of telemetry left, but just heard the signal from the spacecraft is gone, and within the next 45 seconds, so will be the spacecraft. Uh, I hope you're all as deeply proud of this amazing accomplishment. Congratulations to you all. This has been an incredible mission, an incredible spacecraft, and you're all an incredible team. I'm going to call this the end of mission. Project Manager, off the net.